Welcome back. And now that I have a document created, I want to go ahead and use that document. It's the most recent one uh, that I have used here. So I have it under recent. You can see it is named 8x10. If for some reason I wanted to rename this document, there are three ellipses right under this. And the first option is to rename. Um, I'm going to leave it like that. So now all I need to do is click on it to open this document. And I can take two fingers and pinch and zoom out. I can zoom way in. It just looks white for now, actually. Let's do this. It just looks white for now, but I can zoom way in and seeing all these pixels. Uh, or I can pinch and release my two fingers together and it will fill the entire screen. Uh, it does actually fill the entire screen. If you go to the upper right hand corner, there are two arrows pointing away from each other and that will get rid of all of almost all of the toolbars uh, so that you can see more of the document. I'm gonna bring those back for demo purposes. Uh, in terms of tools, just the most basic tools for right now. Well, up here first, I've got my pixel brushes. Uh, that's great. If I tap on that a second time, I have a whole bunch of different options. And even within the different uh, dry media, lettering, marker, marker brushes, right? There are different kinds of brushes and they'll, they will all have different kinds of looks, right? So those are great to play around with. I actually don't really wanna talk about pixel brushes too much. In my demo, I am going to choose to use what we'll get to in just a moment, but right below the pixel brushes, we've got live brushes. Within the live brushes, you have either watercolor or oil to choose from. All right, you can sort of see it start to blend and bleed out. If this wasn't just black, you would kind of see how they start to bleed together in here. All right, how much they bleed together, we get to that in the future. Uh, before I get to the vector brushes, uh, I do want to point out that you can undo things. That's one of the great things about digital art. Uh, but right now, what I'm doing is just tapping two fingers at a time to undo. I can redo by tapping three fingers at a time. Or along the top of the screen, there's a curved arrow that goes to the left or to the right to undo or to redo. So we got that. Right below the live brushes are my pixel brush, sorry, are my vector brushes. And there are quite a few to choose from here. Uh, they, oops, they don't have as many as the pixel brushes. The nice thing about the vector brushes are though, I could choose something that's eight by 10 like this, and I could enlarge it to be the size of a billboard and it wouldn't look pixelated at all. And that is why what I want to do is to go through and for most of the demo purposes, use the vector brush. Uh, I like it because it also looks most kind of like a pen um, to me, and that's really useful. Right below my three brush options, right? Pixel, live, and vector is my eraser tool. And I can tap that to choose my eraser tool, or I can double tap my Apple Pencil to go back and forth between the brush tool and the eraser tool. Okay, so let me undo some of this. The other things that I wanna show you in terms of tools for right now are choosing a color. So towards the bottom, kind of right in the middle of the screen, there's a black circle. Um, that is my color picker or my color wheel. I can move this into the upper right-hand corner in that square in the middle, and it will give me a different color. The circle around the perimeter allows me to choose other colors. And keep coming around, go all the way around and get kind of most colors here. Um, I can also, within this color wheel, choose different opacities. And that is going to make it more or less see-through. And the more that I layer things, 
the more opaque that they will get, but you'll always kind of be able to see the strokes of your brushes. So that's opacity. Comes in handy in different ways. The brush size is right below that, and I can make this larger. Or smaller. Uh, I can also, oh, let's, oops, go here, we'll go really small. It's barely visible, right? What I can also do is choose different sizes for my eraser. And get really thin in here. So it's pretty helpful. Uh, in a few different ways. I'm just going to take both of these, put them someplace in the middle like that. So that is the most basic set down scenario art. That is the most basic situation in terms of finding some of the drawing, erasing, color picking, and size of brush kinds of tools. So let's play around with that and then we'll come back for more in a moment.